Chapter 2 Natural Resources Points to Learn Natural Resources Number 1 Land Resources and Land Use Number 2 Water Resources Number 3 Soil Resources Number 4 Forests and Wildlife Number 5 Mineral Resources Learning Outcomes After learning this chapter, you will get the following information. Number 1. Introduction of Natural Resources Number 2. Information of Land Use in Maharashtra Number 3. Availability, Use and Pollution of Water Number 4. Importance of Conservation of Water Number 5. Various types of soil. Number 6. Information of conservation of soil. Number 7. Types of forests and importance of forests. Number 8. Conservation of forests and animals. Number 9. Distribution of minerals. Number 10. Need of conservation of minerals. What is a resource? Any type of material and form of energy that we use in our life for making it easy and comfortable can be called as a resource. However, it is necessary that the said materials or energy is technologically available and economically viable. We use different minerals as raw materials in various industries. These minerals existed as earth materials since they were formed. However, these remained as unutilized resources. They became resources only after the appropriate technology was developed. Similarly, the biogas that we use as energy resource existed since long, but it became a resource only when the technology to use it was developed. The resources that we obtain from nature are called natural resources. Using these, we may get involved in developing some facilities such as power generation, industries, transport, etc. Such facilities may be considered as man-made resources. The development of a region basically depends on the availability of resources and its proper and judicious utilization. In this chapter, we shall be discussing the natural resources available in Maharashtra and the manner in which they are put to use. Of the natural resources, we shall be collecting information on land, water, soil, forest and mineral resources in the state. While discussing each of these natural resources, we shall note that the typical characteristics of these resources which limit or enhance their utilizations. Land Resources and Land Use In this section, we shall be discussing the land resources and land use in Maharashtra. Total area of Maharashtra state is 3,7580 square kilometers. Agriculture claims maximum proportion of the land resources. Hence, we shall discuss the availability of land resources in the state with reference to agriculture. The availability of land for agriculture depends on the relief and slope of the land. Its utility for agriculture largely depends on rainfall and soil conditions. See the map of physiography and drainage given in figure 1.3. Also study the rainfall map given in this book. They will give some idea about the constraint of using the land resource particularly for agriculture. Land of Konkan and the Western Ghats 
has high relief and steep slope. This limits the availability of land for agriculture. In the eastern parts of the state, the availability of land for agriculture is less because of the competition with other uses such as forest and mining activity. The central Maharashtra receives low rainfall, although this does not directly restrict the availability of land. Its usability for agriculture gets considerably reduced. The areas of flood plains of the major rivers in the state like Tapi, Godavari, Vardha Vai Ganga, Bhima and Krishna are the regions having better land resource potentials as far as the agriculture is concerned. Fallow Land Fallow lands are classified into two groups. The lands that can never be used for cultivation are called permanent fallows. Due to heavy downpour, topsoil layers get removed and land becomes permanently unsuitable for cultivation. Similarly, some areas turn into marshy lands due to water logging. Particularly, Kha land in Konkan coastal region can be considered as permanent fallows. Large portion of cultivated area in Maharashtra totally depends on rainfall. In a year, if rainfall is not adequate for sowing, land is not cultivated. Such lands are termed current fallow lands. Efforts are required to bring such land under cultivation if irrigation is made available. Similarly, these lands can be used for fruit gardening or forestry plantation. The land use in the region is an outcome of the interaction between peasant community and physical conditions controlling agrarian activity. However, with changing time, needs of the society varies. The technological development in agriculture equips farming community to intensively use the resources and global market conditions dictate farmer to choose new crops. All these factors cause changes in land use pattern. A change in land use pattern also leads to a chain of changes in socio-environmental problems. Land use The term land use relates to the purposes to which land in a given region is put to use. We can have general land use, urban land use, agricultural land use, etc. Forest, agriculture, settlement, industrial estates, etc. are some of the purposes considered in general land use of a region. The use of land for these different purposes in a region and the extent of land used for each of these purposes defines the pattern of land use in any region. The general land use of the state as whole has been given in figure 2.1. It shows the percentages of the land used for categories like forest, net shown area, area not available for agriculture, and fallow land. The proportion of the land used for each of these purposes varies considerably in different districts. This has been shown in the figure 2.2, .2, depicting land use pattern of each district. Using this, study the patterns of land use categories. Net Sown Area In Maharashtra, 56.6% land area is used for agriculture is known as cultivated land. Physical setup, climate, soils, irrigation facilities, gradient of area, affect the land under cultivation. Western Maharashtra and Vidarbha has 70% area under cultivation. In Konkan and Eastern Vidarbha, 
Area's gradient is steep and land is covered by forests. Hence, the areas under cultivation are relatively low. Due to increasing population and urbanization, agricultural land around urban area is shrinking. Non-agricultural use of land The land which is not used for agriculture is known as non-agricultural use of land. Land is particularly used for residential and settlement purpose. There is a rapid growth in industrialization and urbanization in Maharashtra. The percentage of non-agricultural land is increasing. Water Resources For entire biosphere, water is the most essential resource. It is one of the basic needs of all the life forms. Its availability in any region is largely determined by climatic conditions of the region. We get water in the form of rainfall and it is the only source of usable water on the earth. However, rainfall, though it is the source of water by itself, does not become a water resource. It needs to be collected stored and then supplied to various climates of water resource. Water is a renewable resource. Being liquid in nature, it can be transported from one place to another by canals or through pipes. Water is used by humans for large number of activities. We use water mainly for agriculture, industries as well as for our domestic needs. Besides these, water is used for power generation, transportation, recreation, etc. Water Resources in Maharashtra In Maharashtra, distribution of rainfall is not uniform and it ranges from more than 3000 mm in Western Ghats region to less than 450 mm in rain shadow area of the Ghats. See the map of rainfall distribution in Maharashtra given in figure 1.4. About 80% of rainfall in Maharashtra is concentrated in four months of monsoon. This leads to scarcity condition in the rest of the period. Hence it is necessary to store water and use it judiciously for the entire year. Water resources in Maharashtra can be grouped into two categories such as surface water and ground water. The water which flows through the river channels and gets collected in lakes or is stored in reservoirs is termed as surface water. The water that is percolated into the ground and gets stored at deeper depths in the ground is termed as ground water. Basalt rock in Maharashtra is such that it does not allow much of the water to percolate. The dams having height of 10 meters and above are called large dams. Maharashtra has highest number of large dams in the country. There are more than 1,800 major dams in Maharashtra. The total gross storage of these dams is over 37 billion cubic meters. Of course, each year one may not have this much of storage. It depends on the rainfall in a given year. Besides these major dams, there are large number of medium and small dams as well as buns storing huge quantity of water. The groundwater available in the state is estimated to be 32.96 BCM. Of course, the groundwater is not available in the same quantity in different parts. The hilly region of Western Ghats receives more rain, but due to the steep slope, percolation rate is quite low. In central Maharashtra, as the rainfall is less, the groundwater potential is also low. Comparatively, 
in the low lying area within the river basins ground water is more water scarcity agriculture in maharashtra is totally dependent on rainfall only 17% of area is irrigated and 83% of area is depending on rainfall in maharashtra more than 62000 square kilometers area is drought prone zone ahmednagar pune satara sangli osmanabad and dure districts of maharashtra come under drought prone zone area which frequently faces drought conditions is called drought prone area as and when rainfall is scanty leads to water scarcity conditions under such conditions wells dry out creating problems for agriculture this leads to decrease in agricultural products water pollution when the quality of water decreases it becomes unusable this process is called water pollution water gets contaminated or polluted by sewage water industrial water animal wastes waste water from sugar factory fertilizer factory garbage paper and plastic industries etc drinking water gets contaminated due to the mixing of chromium sodium mercury copper etc hyacinth plant spread over water bodies and percentage of oxygen falls water becomes dark black in color if such water gets mixed with the drinking water it leads to spread of diseases water conservation rain water is a main source of water in maharashtra maximum area of maharashtra is under drought prone area so it is necessary to conserve water water can be saved by the following methods number 1 care should be taken that every drop of water percolates into the ground number 2 Bunds should be constructed on smaller streams, percolation tanks, village tanks, farm tanks, etc. Number three, the dams should be dredged to increase the storage capacity. They should be repaired to prevent leakage. Number four, social awareness must be created to save water. Number five. rain water harvesting plan should be followed number 6 forest conservation plan should be implemented to conserve water our state has the largest number of major dams over 1800 large dams though provide irrigation water for large extent of areas the huge storage of water in reservoirs leads to some environmental as well as social problems besides the problem of displacement of population due to the construction of such dams the flow conditions in the channel downstream the dam and changed to considerable extent and the river regime in these parts changes the river ecosystems in downstream areas get threatened due to lowering of discharges irrigation if the water required by a crop cannot be fulfilled by the rain water it becomes necessary to supply water by artificial means such a supply of water through artificial means is called irrigation in maharashtra well irrigation is a prime source of irrigation following statistical information indicates the different sources of irrigation table number 2.1 maharashtra irrigation 2009 to 2010 number 1 means of irrigation well irrigation percentage 55.0 
Number 2. Means of irrigation. Canal irrigation. Percentage 22.5. Number 3. Means of irrigation. Tank irrigation. Percentage 14.5. Number 4. Means of irrigation. Lift irrigation. Percentage 8.0. Total 100%. Number 1. Well Irrigation Well irrigation is a private source of irrigation. Well irrigation covers maximum area of irrigation in Maharashtra. In Konkan, very limited area is under well irrigation. In Ahmednagar district, largest number of wells are found. Of the total irrigated area, the share of well irrigation is 55%. Number 2. Canal Irrigation Majority of the dams in Maharashtra are constructed for irrigation purpose. Out of the total area under irrigation, 22.5% area is irrigated by canals. Western Maharashtra is suitable for irrigation projects because the rivers rise along the eastern slope of the western ghats. These are east flowing rivers. Large number of dam sites are available on the eastern slope. Number 3. Tank Irrigation In the eastern Maharashtra, Chandrapur, Bhandara, Gondia, Garchiroli districts, tank irrigation is the main source of irrigation. In Maharashtra, 14.5% area is irrigated by this system. Sprinklers and drip irrigation are water saving methods of irrigation. They save 40% of water. Drip water irrigation supplies water to the roots of the plants. It saves not only water but also fertilizers. Available water resources can be utilized for two and a half times more area. Only required amount of water is used in sprinklers. Number 4. Lift Irrigation When the area is higher than the source of water, it is required to lift water from the source for irrigation. This type of irrigation is known as lift irrigation. The basic source of water may be river, tank or dams. Water is unable to reach farms by the surface canal. Hence, it needs to be lifted. In Maharashtra, 8% of irrigated area is under lift irrigation. Demand for water is continuously increasing due to the increasing population, irrigation and industrial growth. While supplying water, priority is given for the drinking water and remaining water is used for irrigation and industrial sectors. Soil Resources Soil is basically a mixture of weathered rocks, mineral nutrients, decaying organic matter, water, air and variety of organisms. Soil is considered to be a perfect ecosystem. Plants use soil as an ecosystem not as material. Soil is a key component of biodiversity of a region next only to climate. It is a base of all life on land. Plants get their nutrients from soil. Soil is an essential resource for entire vegetal world on the land. The soil forming processes are quite slow and hence the soil becomes a non-renewable resource. It is not a material that can be produced artificially in laboratories. Being a prime resource and the base of the life of land, it is necessary that soils are properly managed against the loss of this resource 
through erosion or degradation due to improper and excessive use. Types of Soils Based on type of rock, climate of the region and the duration of period of soil formation, we come across different types of soils. Black Soil Black soil is formed due to weathering of basalt rock. Since this soil contains titanic ferrous magnetite, it is black in color. This soil consists of iron, lime, potash, aluminium, calcium and magnesium carbonate. Black soil is deficient of nitrogen, phosphorus and organic matter. This soil is also called as rigor soil. This soil is very fertile due to its moisture contents. In Maharashtra, black cotton soil is mainly found in Amravati, Akola, Buldhana, Vashim, Parbhani, Dhule, Jarga, Hingoli, Osmanabad, Ahmadnagar, districts of Maharashtra. This soil is suitable for crops like cotton, sugarcane, fruits, wheat, jawar and pulses. Red and Yellowish Soil In Maharashtra, red and yellowish soil is formed from weathering of ancient granite and gneiss rocks. This soil is red in color due to the iron compound. In some places, this soil is formed in yellow, brown and gray colors. The soil lacks in phosphoric acid, organic matter, lime and nitrogen. The soil is found in Nagpur, Bhandara, Gondia, Chandrapur and Garchiroli district. Crops like bajra, groundnut, potato and rice grow well in this soil. Soil Erosion and Conservation Soil formation is a natural process operating at very slow pace. It takes very long, at times 100 to 1000 years to develop few centimeters thick soil. Of course, this period depends on the rate of number of factors and varies from region to region. Soil erosion is a partial or total removal of top layer of soil from the land. It is the top layer of the soil that contains the organic matter and nutrients and promotes the growth of vegetation. Its removal renders the soil unproductive. Soil erosion is a natural process and hence cannot be completely stopped. At the best, one can think of reducing the rates of erosion. Conservation measures are aimed at reducing the soil erosion rate. In Maharashtra, though the problem of soil erosion is felt almost in all the parts, it is quite severe in certain areas. In the western Ghats region, with heavy rainfall and steep slopes, the offshoots of the Ghats extending in both directions and the flood plain areas of Tapi with recent alluvium are some of the areas where this problem is quite serious. Deforestation, overgrazing, ploughing, in the direction of slope are some of the factors that aggravate the problem of soil erosion. Conservation efforts include afforestation of barren land, plugging of gullies, covering the sloping land with continuous contour trenches, diverting the overflows and reducing the velocity of running water. Soil conservation measures are being undertaken by government departments as well as a number of non-government organizations, NGOs, 
under watershed development programs in different parts of the state. Soil degradation Decline in the fertility status of a soil is termed as soil degradation. This is an effect of excessive utilization of soils, over irrigation, excessive use of chemicals, fertilizers, etc. The rotating crops, keeping the land fallow for some period of time, use of organic manures and some of the measures suggested to counter the problem of soil degradation. In Maharashtra, problem of soil degradation is serious in the areas of irrigated farming. Due to over-irrigation, salts in the soil situated at deeper depths get moved to the top layers and at times salt comes right to the surface. As a result, large tracts of irrigated lands become unusable for further cultivation. Alluvial soils In the low level areas of river basins and their flood plain, alluvial soils are found due to continuous deposition of the load. Due to availability of water, and fine texture, these soils become very fertile. In Maharashtra, these soils dominate the lower reaches of main rivers. In coastal tracts of Konkan, particularly near the mouth of various rivers, these soils are found. In North Maharashtra, the basins of Tapi and Purna are full of deep alluvial deposits. Large areas in this basin are covered by alluvial soils. As alluvial soils are fertile, various crops can be cultivated. Laterite soils Laterite soil is found in the area where rainfall is more than 2000 mm and definite dry season. As a result of intensive leaching, silica and lime are washed away. As a result, proportion of iron oxide and aluminium compounds in the soil increases. This soil is deficient in nitrogen, phosphorus and organic matter. Fertility of these soil is quite low. This soil is found in Ratnagiri, Raigad, Sindhudurg, Kolhapur and Satara districts. This soil is used for paddy cultivation and horticulture in Konkan. Areas under forests Average annual rainfall in Maharashtra is 1000 mm. Area under forests depends on the distribution of rainfall. Ratnagiri, Sindhudurg, Raigad, Thane, Garchiroli, Chandrapur, Bhandara, Gondia districts of Maharashtra receive rainfall more than 1000 mm. On the eastern slopes of the western Ghats, particularly western parts of Nasik, Pune, Satara, Sangli, Kolhapur districts have significant areas under forests. Forest areas in central Maharashtra are very limited due to low rainfall. These areas are under drought prone zone. In the same areas, land used for agriculture is more due to flat surface. For the environmental balance in any of the region, minimum areas under forest should be 33% of the total land. But, in Maharashtra, area under forest is only 17%. Special efforts are taken by the government to increase the areas under forest like social forestry program. Forests and wildlife Forests are quite important biotic natural resource. 
forests must have been the first natural resource that man must have used to satisfy his demand for food before they could develop an art for cultivating plants. Besides, they are used for humans in economic terms. Forests have greater ecological value. Forests provide habitat for a large number of life forms. As plants absorb carbon dioxide in the air, the forests are considered as sinks of CO2. In the present time of concern, about the global climatic changes, forests are assumed as a new dimension. It is desired that a region should have one-third of the land under forest cover for maintaining the balance of environment. Types of Forests in Maharashtra The following types of forests are found in Maharashtra. Number 1 tropical semi evergreen forests number 2 tropical moist deciduous forests number 3 tropical dry deciduous forests number 4 tropical thorny forests number 5 mangrove forests tropical semi evergreen forests Tropical semi-evergreen forests are found in the region which receive rainfall above 2000 mm and annual average temperature between 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. These are broad-leafed and hardwood forest. Trees here grow as high as 60 to 65 meters. There are various species of trees like kinjal, Sal, Sag, Kusum, Arjun, Hirda, Behda, etc. found. These forests are economically important. Woods are used for producing agricultural equipments and building houses. Leaves, flowers, fruits, roots and barks are used as herbal medicine. These forests are found in eastern part of Sindhudurg, Ratnagiri, Thane and western part of Kolhapur, Satara, Pune districts. Tropical Moist Deciduous Forests Tropical moist deciduous forests are found in the region where rainfall is between 1000 to 2000 mm and the average temperature is between 20 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius. These types of forests grow well in rainy season and shed their leaves in the beginning of the summer season. They grow as tall as 30 to 40 meters. A large varieties of species of trees like sal, teak, sandalwood, parus, kanchan, arjun, etc. are found here. These forests are found in Bhandara, Gondia, Garchiroli, Chandrapur, Nasik, Pune, Kolhapur, Dure, Nandurbar, districts of Maharashtra. Tropical Dry Deciduous Forests Tropical Dry Deciduous Forests are found in the region where the rainfall is between 500 and 1000 mm and the average temperature is between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Trees are short and sparse. They have thorns and shed their leaves in summer. Woods obtained from these forests are used as firewood. Tendo leaves are used for BD work. Bell, palace, anjan, etc. are found here. Jargao, Dure, Burdhana, Amravati, Nagpur, Bhandara, Gondia and Akola districts have this type of forests. Hot Tropical Thorny Forests Hot Tropical Thorny Forests are found in the region which receives less than 500 mm rainfall. Here, summer is very hot and dry. 
These forests are generally found in the rain shadow region. Here the climate is very unfavorable for growth of the trees. Short and thorny brushes are found here. Boar, Babul, Nimb, Khair, Hirida, Cactus are the common plants found here. Babul and Neem trees are used for making agricultural equipments and building houses. Bark of Babul is used for making hide. Korpar, aloe vera is a medicinal plant. Mangrove forests. The forests in coastal areas, particularly in intertidal zones and estuaries, are known as mangroves. Trees here are evergreen and they grow in salty and marshy land. Plants like candle, tivar are found in the forests. Conservation of forests. Conservation of forests is a multiple activity. Various plans have been implemented to save forests from destruction. Efforts have been made to maintain the forest wealth. Excessive exploitation of forest wealth is prohibited. Forest conservation plan includes proper management, safety, care of plants and extension of forest area. Forests are necessary to prevent soil erosion, provide clean and healthy air, maintain ecological balance, retain the level of groundwater table, protect wild animals, preserve forest products, keep the tribal settlements and provide raw materials for forest-based industries. According to the national policy and scientific view, 33% of geographical area of the state must be under forests. Since forest area in Maharashtra is decreasing day by day, conservation of forest has become necessary in the state. Existing forest area should not only be preserved but also be extended further. Thousands of tree saplings are planted every year. Trees are planted on both sides of the roads. Encouragement is given to plants, trees, which help to preserve local biological diversity and climate. Planting trees on buns of fields and on fallow lands is encouraged. The state government has undertaken Santa Tukaram Vanagram Yojana in 2006. Under this plan, forests and forest wealth are saved from illegal felling of trees and social awareness is created about importance of forests and wild animals. Increasing population and its needs will increase pressure on forest wealth in future. To reduce this pressure, we have to find an alternative to forest products. For example, we can use solar energy natural gas, biogas instead of firewoods. Encouragement of social forestry, extension of forest and proper management can naturally reduce these problems. Wildlife Resources in Maharashtra Wildlife that comprises of all the living organisms in a region Inhabiting their natural habitat are included in wildlife resources of the region. Wildlife in itself is a resource in both commercial as well as ecological consideration. In commercial sense, they attract tourists and in ecological sense, they help maintaining the forest ecosystem in a perfect environmental balance. Wildlife in an area is a cultural asset of the region. Though forest land in Maharashtra is limited and much less than the desired 33%, it has wide spectrum of wildlife. This is because the state has a variety of forests 
ranging from semi evergreen scrub land vegetation. It is home to a large number of animals and bird species. Wild animals like tiger, leopards, crocodile, bison, elephants, nilgai, wild deers, etc. inhabit different forest lands in the state. The government has set up many parks and sanctuaries to protect these animals and promote tourism. Two major forest areas of Maharashtra, namely the Western Ghats and East Maharashtra, are particularly rich in wildlife. There are four tiger projects in the state, Melghat, Tadoba, Penj and Sayadri. Besides these tiger projects, there are number of other projects specially started for the protection of specific wild animals, example Dajipur in Kolhapur district is particularly a reserve for bison. The giant squirrel called Shekru, option Shekaru in Marathi from Bhima Shankar forest in Pune district is the state animal of Maharashtra. Mineral Resources Economically important Earth minerals that are extracted from land are known as minerals. Basically, all rocks are mixture of different minerals. Hence, all the areas have some minerals. However, these are scattered in the rock. Concentration of a particular mineral in a rock makes it economically important. Minerals are classified as metallic and non-metallic. Both these form raw materials for different industries. Conservation of Mineral Resources Minerals are the non-renewable resources and hence these are exhaustible. These resources used as raw materials in different industries are considered as the backbone of economy of a region. Most of the traditional energy resources such as coal, mineral oil, etc. are in great demand due to ever-increasing population, its changing lifestyle and resulting energy requirements. Hence, it is necessary to use them in most judicious manner. Maharashtra is not having very large reserves for metallic or non-metallic minerals. Same is the case of energy resources. Yet, it is one of the leading industrial states. The demand of energy by industrial sector as well as agricultural sector is increasing. Under such situation, it is essential that the available mineral and energy resources are conserved. Minerals can be conserved by adopting the policy expressed in the consumer ethics of the four R's Rethink, Reduce, Recycle and Repair. Energy Resources Coal Coal is an important mineral. It is used as an energy resource in railway transportation. It is also used as a raw material in fertilizer and chemical industry. Thermal electricity is produced by using coal. Anthracite, bituminous, lignite and peat are different types of coal. Cordy, Paras, Turbe are the important thermal power stations. In Maharashtra, Chandrapur, Yavatmar and Nagpur districts have coal mines. Crude oil and natural gas. Crude oil is a compound of carbon and hydrogen. It is generally found in lime and sandstone. In Maharashtra, crude oil deposits have been discovered in the year 1973 at Mumbai High which is located in the northwestern part of the Arabian Sea near Mumbai. It is a major oil field in the country. Natural gas is also found here. 
It is used as domestic fuel and is also used in the thermal power station. It is also used for making artificial rubber. Iron ore Iron ore is an important mineral. It is used in construction of building, automobiles, furnitures and electronic industries. Iron ore is a backbone of the industries. It is found in ore form. Hematite, magnetite, limonite and siderite are the different types of iron ore. Chandrapur, Garchiroli, Gondia, Nagpur in eastern part of Maharashtra and Sindhudurg in southern part of Maharashtra have iron ore deposits. Manganese Manganese is found in black-gray color. It is an important raw material used in the production of iron and steel and ferro-manganese alloy. Approximately 95% of manganese is used in iron and steel industry. 10 kilograms of manganese is used for the production of 1 ton steel. Manganese is also used in china clay and bleaching powder, photography, cotton textile and matchbox industries. Maharashtra is a leading producer of manganese in India. Bhandara, Gondia, Nagpur, Chandrapur, Sindhudurg districts are producing manganese in Maharashtra. Bauxite Bauxite is used to produce aluminium. Aluminium is a rustless and light metal. It is a good conductor of heat and is cheaper than copper. Hence it is used in electric equipments. Aluminium is also used in manufacturing of household utensils, spare parts of automobiles, aircrafts, railway compartments, frames for doors and windows, etc. Aluminium is also used in chemical, oil refineries, cement and iron and steel industries. Maharashtra is the leading bauxite producing state in India. Kolhapur, Sangli, Sindhudurg, Raigarh districts have bauxite deposits. <laughs>